Hey everyone, one spitting here with another battle report. So I brought out my Bretonians getting uh, ready for a tournament that's coming up, uh, actually tomorrow, uh, as of the recording of this uh, battle report. Uh, 3,000 points, we decided just to play a battle line. The guy I'm playing is also going to the same tournament, so he's trying out his list. Uh, I really enjoy playing this guy, I think he's a great general, he's got a beautifully painted army, and um, most games we've played have just been a lot of fun. So really looking forward to it. Uh, starting on the left, he's got a couple units of Marauder Horsemen, a Giant, a Hell Cannon. He's got two big units of Marauders with great weapons, a unit of Chaos Warriors between them with the War Shrine behind it. Um, he's got his Battle Standard Bearer and his General right next to each other in the front of that unit. You can see what they have, but one thing he's doing there is on the Battle Standard Bearer, he's got an item that anyone in base contact has their magical weapons nulled. So if there's somebody fighting his general, more than likely it'll be touching his battle standard bearer and therefore won't be able to use a magic weapon. So I think that's a very uh, kind of smart setup, getting some synergy there. Uh, he's also got a couple spellcasters. The one on the left, you can see in the front right corner, is a level 2. And the one on the right is his sorcerer lord level 4. So uh, I stuck a, some... actually. Yeah, so I have a unit of bowmen on my right, then a trebuchet. If you look at the far left, that's my Grover Leak. It's nice bringing that thing out. A lot of my list is based on what I have painted, and uh, this tournament is giving bonus points for conversions and things like that. So I thought the Grover Leak might be a good unit to bring out it's because it's completely scratch built. Anyway, I've got a men at arms, some fast cav in front of them, unit of six Grail Knights. Uh, there's a character in there, I'll talk about her in a bit. A trebuchet. Some Knights of the Realm, Peg Knights in front of them, my Battle Standard Bearer, and then some Questy Knights. I'm not a big fan of Questy Knights, but they're painted. So I've got two hero level characters. Ideally, those two characters and the Prophetess should all be with the Knights of the Realm, but it just didn't really fit in deployment, and I'm not worried about it. I'm not looking to charge turn one anyway, so I'll just move in there next turn. Uh, so the hero, the, the Green Knight model, has the weapon skill 10, rerollable 1 up armor save. And the uh, Battle Standard Bearer has a rerollable 2 up armor save. So they're designed to go in the front of the unit to make it so that unit doesn't take a lot of wounds. And then uh, starting in the far right, I've put a level 1 damsel with the prayer icon with the men at arms, so they have the same ward save as my knights. And remember, the Grover Leak has the same ward save too, so I've got a lot of ward saves in this army. And then I have the Prophetess in with the, the, the Grail Knights. She'll eventually move over to the Knights of the Realm. Uh, she wouldn't fit there right now. And I figured turn one, in case he puts a magic missile or something on the Grail Knights, he'll get some extra magic resistance. Then on the far left, I have a unit of Knights Errant with the Errantry banner. And my general is there, and he's got the heroic killing blow, reroll, failed rolls to wound, and he's got a one-time rerollable armor save. Uh, I guess I, I think I have other magic banners, too. I just don't remember. <laughs> I need to learn my list. Anyway, I, got some, I have some more... Um, some peasants there on the left. So I've got two trebuchets. I don't know if I even pointed out the second one or not, but anyway, two trebuchets So I've and uh, two units of archers and my fast calves. So I have a fair amount of shooting, fair amount of magic, lots of combat. Uh, it seems to me like a fairly balanced list. So he gets to go first. Uh, he used that house really well to hide his giant and uh, one of his units of fast calf. Otherwise, he's trying to get over to me. You can see I kind of, he set up centrally and I kind of set up to the left. And my plan here is to use my peasants to hold up two units um, so I can kill the third unit and then get it off the table, reform, and then attack his other guys, hopefully who will be whittled down a little bit by that point. So that's my plan. So I move up. Uh, you can see I'm angling a little bit. I, I don't want to get close enough for him to charge me. Uh, next time, I don't. I want to take my Grail Relic and march him up in front of his rightmost Marauder unit, take my Men-at-Arms, march him up close to his General's unit, and charge the snot out of the other big <laughs> marauder unit. Um, you can see on the left, I'm taking my my strength six questy knights. I figured uh, I'd like to take out the hell cannon with them, and then turn them to help out with the rest of the combats. And have my general with the knights errant to take out the gi the giant and or the hell cannon. Uh, if the giant charges me, I'm okay with that. I'm hoping that my general can get a heroic killing blow, and if not, I'll be steadfast and all that. So uh, I do swift reform my archers. So they'll be able to shoot at his his fast cav. And you can see when I moved up, I moved my general to the left, so his giant charges. I guess I could have made way anyway, but whatever. So, and you can see I also put my characters in the Knight of the Realm unit here on the left. 
uh, I'm, I'm aiming my trebuchets at that middle Chaos Warrior unit because if it scatters, it should hit something. So it scattered and I killed a handful of, of Marauders with great weapons on the right. They look like flails with the great weapons. Killed two horses here. They must have the Mark of Slanesh um, because he didn't have to take uh, panic tests. And we go to Warriors of Chaos turn two. You know, I he told me before the game that he brought Wolfric the Wanderer, and uh, seeing this play out was just really scary. Uh, starting on turn one, uh, Wolfric comes on on a five up, uh, so he didn't roll it then, but on turn two, he rolled, uh, he probably needed a four up, and Wolfric came on. Uh, those look like Chaos Warriors, that's because he just didn't have the models with him this game, but those uh, are also Marauders with great weapons right behind my lines, <laughs> and that, that, that is a scary, scary sight. Um, yeah, I wasn't worried about it too much because I feel like I have the tools to somewhat deal with it, maybe slow them down. I've got mobility to move away from them. Uh, it's one reason why I like the Bretonian list better than my Beastman list because I feel like uh, I just ha have a, a greater variety of tools available to me. Anyway, so he moves these guys around just kind of pestering my, my bowmen. Uh, yeah. Whew. Uh, the giant charged in. He's in my flank, and he really just couldn't fit any closer than he did, so he just kind of clipped me. Uh, you can see during the magic phase, I got the, uh, oh, the lore of beast spell that makes you minus one to hit, and everything's dangerous terrain, because I was thinking that some of the things the giant could roll uh, would be swing with a club, and he would have to roll to hit, and I I was wrong. He didn't, so it was kind of a wasted spell. But ironically, he did fail his dangerous terrain, <laughs> charging me, so he took a wound. So otherwise it looks like this. You can see he took his level 2 out of the leftmost unit and is now on the hill. Yeah, the damn hell cannon. It shoots at my men-at-arms, and I don't, I don't remember where he I think he was aiming at him. Anyway, when all was said and done, he only killed one. Remember, those men-at-arms have a 5-up ward save against the hell cannon shot. But it doesn't matter. Just because he hit them, they had to take a panic test. They were leadership 8 re-rollable. Failed them both. Turned away from the hell cannon. And remember, I was 5 by 10. So when they bounced through my grail relic, they were automatically off the table. <laughs> I hate that damn hell cannon. I mean, if I played Warriors, I would bring it. But it, that's just rough. Uh, so he comes in here. I, I remember the giant. The giant's Marcus Lanesh, so he has always strike first which is really scary. So he rolled the thing where he picks you up, and so he targeted my general, picked him up. I have one chance to wound him, and if I don't wound him, he, like, shoves me in his pants or something like that, and that was really scary. But uh, I rolled a wound. I was hoping to get a six and get you know, heroic kill him blow his ass before he shoved me in his pants, but uh, I didn't, but I did roll I did roll to wound at least. And so then he couldn't do anything more. My general did another wound on him, but again, didn't get heroic killing blow. So there we are. We stick in combat. His general, his uh, giant, sitting on three wounds. I was, man, if I could have got killing blow on the thing, I'd have been set up perfectly to charge the hell cannon, and would have been just in a wonderful situation. But at the same time, I'm really glad that my general uh, isn't dead. So we go to Bretonian, Bretonia turn two. So despite not having the men at arms, everything can still work. I park my my fast cav in front of his rightmost unit. My um, Grill Relic in front of his Warriors unit with his General and his Battle Standard Bearer. That re Relic is fairly survivable. Um, as long as my BSB is nearby and it can it can uh, pass its stubborn 8 re-rollable, uh, it, it takes people a few turns to chop through them. But I needed his rightmost Marauder unit not to get in its flank, because that would just kill it real quick. So that's why I put my Fast Cav in front of the rightmost unit. I take my Grill Knights and my, my big block with both characters into his Marauder unit. Uh, I have a chance of beating him uh, in having him not be steadfast on the charge. It's not a sure thing, but I have a chance of it. I need uh, Wolfric the Wanderer's unit not to rear charge my Battle Standard Bear's unit should I not break the Marauders. So I uh, park my Peg Knights in front of them. My Questy Knights charge his Fast Cav. Uh, they, they wanted to charge the Hell Cannon, but obviously that's why he put his Fast Cav there. So that side of the board looks like that. Uh, I'm very happy with that charge. It's six Grail Knights, 12 Knights of the Realm, and two hero level characters. Uh, I know I'm going to win the combat. Uh, we just don't, I don't know if I'm going to break them. 
Uh, so my archers turn around. I think they might have failed their... I don't know if they failed their um, swift reform or not. doesn't really matter. Oh, no, they, yeah, they passed it. They shot, killed two more of the fast cav units. Fast cav units down to one guy. Uh, so I, I aim a stone somewhere. I, I think I was in the middle of the rightmost marauder unit. Uh, just knowing that eventually I'm going to have to deal with them, maybe, and, you know, the more I get them down, the better, and I want to keep the stone away from my knights, and of course it scatters and kills two of my fast cav, which doesn't matter as long as I pass my uh, my leadership test, and, they, and they're only on a leadership, I think, six, and I passed it, so <laughs> I, was, I was happy about that. I don't know if I had reroll or not, it didn't matter. So after combat, it looks like this. I was extremely lucky. I think I got the spell on them where he was minus one to hit, which really helped. He's, but they're great weapons, so when they hit, they're at strength five. Uh, he didn't do a single wound to me. I was two wounds away from having him uh, not be steadfast. Uh, so, you know, like I said, I was a little bit disappointed, but then it didn't matter because when he rolled a steadfast roll, he rolled snake eyes. So... It really didn't matter. Uh, but I think we're okay. I mean, I bought time with everything else. Uh, over here, uh, my questing knights killed as fast cav, but I've lost two guys. Uh, yeah, those. Yeah, they make me mad sometimes. Uh, the, the giant in that combat uh, rolled for a swing with a club, uh, so he auto-hit a bunch of times my general, and I was actually pretty lucky. My general only took two wounds. You can see I'm using my Beastman wound markers because I just like them. And then he did get heroic killing blow, killed the giant. Then I decided just to turn around. I could have made it to where I could charge the Hell Cannon. But then I was thinking his Hell Cannon might just charge my Questy Knights, uh, which I'd be okay with. I want my Questy Knights fighting the Hell Cannon. I figured if the Hell Cannon charged the rear of my Knights Errant, I would just make way with my Lord and try to get heroic killing blow on it. So... Um, I like my options better here. That way I am facing Wolfric's unit so that, um, you know, if he charges my Peg Knights and gets rid of them, I have some way of dealing with Wolfric before he charges my Knights of the Realm in the rear. So it felt risky at the time, but uh, that's what I decided to do. Warriors turn three. Well, starting on the right, he takes his infantry blocks, charges my redirectors just to get rid of them. Wolfric charges the Peg Knights. Really not a whole lot he could have done. Um, I was kind of surprised he didn't charge his Hell Cannon into my Questy Knights. I don't know what should happen there, like, you know, if, if he should be okay or not. Um, but at the same time, he can just shoot at me and, and cause, auto, you know, panic tests. It's not a bad plan either. So the <laughs> his lone remaining fast cab is moving up uh, to survive and to, to possibly cause some problems for me. So peasants are here lined up to die. Uh, the Hell Cannon does shoot at my general's unit, kills some guys, and luckily, I, you know, I'm on leadership nine, but that was scaring me because you just never know. There's no reroll around, and my general passed, which I was very happy about. The uh, amazingly, Wolfric's unit didn't do. A, they may have done one wound on my champion, I think. But anyway, they easily beat my Peg Knights in combat. I fled. I'm glad he didn't catch them, but at the same time, my guys landed right in front of my Questy Knights. So now my Questy Knights can't charge the Hell Cannon, and the damn thing gets to shoot at me again. Uh, over here, this was a real tough decision. You can see that my um, my Fast Cav died on, on the right, and that wasn't any surprise. So that means my Grill Leak's not going to last too much longer. Um, this time in combat... No, this wasn't a hard decision. <laughs> we beat the Marauders. Uh, easily, they were they were past Steadfast at that point. Uh, ran them down to get out of any kind of possible... Uh, you know, I didn't need them charging to the flank of the of the uh, Grill Relic and then overrunning into my unit. So I, I overran. Knight of the Realm unit hit his level 2 Sorcerer, which I was very happy about. And my uh, Grail Knights landed where you see them. I don't like the idea of his War Shrine charge me in the flank, but this is his turn, remember. So I'll get to move before he can do that. Uh, down here, yeah, Bretonian turn three. This was a very difficult decision to make, uh, charging my general's unit into Wolfric's uh, Marauder unit. Uh, I would like to think I have easy odds there, but my general is sitting on one wound. We're going to get a challenge between my general and Wolfric. Uh, he's going to go first, and 
Uh, he's a hero level special character, and Chaos hero levels have better initiative, better weapon skill than Bretonian lords. So it's dicey, but I'm thinking, what else? You know, that, that unit in my rear could really cause some problems, and my general, I, when I turned him around, this is what I had committed to do, so there's nothing else for my guys to do. Over here, I, I march with my Grail Knights. They go up and then just wheel around so they're facing the rest of his units. My Knights of the Realm obviously are locked in with his level 2 Sorcerer. And it looks like this. Uh, one of the trebuchets proceeds to blow itself up. Uh, and my General's unit, look at that. His He just totally whiffed all his attacks. I, I don't remember exactly what happened with Wolfric, but I know that he almost killed my General, but I made all my saves, and so... Then I killed him, did enough extra, they ran off the board. They were far enough away that I went ahead and pursued them, because there was a chance they wouldn't run off the board. Uh, it would have been nice if I could have just reformed, but I felt it was best just to get points where you can, uh, make sure they were dead. And over here is what I believe um, a huge, huge mistake in hindsight. Basically... I was in a challenge with his level 2 and I didn't kill him. I think I did one wound, broke him in combat, and so I chose to pursue him because usually my philosophy is get the points where you can. If he's running away, he's not going to run off the board, he's likely going to rally, kill him. Um, in hindsight, looking at this picture though, I think it would have been better just to reform the face of the rest of his lines. He couldn't have charged my Knight of the Realm unit with anything except the War Shrine, and I think I would just kill that thing through combat res. And uh, it would have left me, if he didn't charge with the War Shrine, uh, or no matter what he did, uh, on you know, on my next turn I could charge whatever with the Grail Knights, but both of my units would have been ready to charge. As it is, he's going to have a turn, and then I have to use my next turn to reform my Battle Standard Bears unit, and it's going to get really awkward. Look at the, at the bottom, the Grail Relique is sitting on, it has six wounds on that model itself, so it's sitting on four wounds. I love that thing. It just <laughs> at the end of combat, my BSP was nearby, so it was stubborn, eight rerollable. It's not killing much, but it's it's holding up the middle of his lines. Anyway, we go to Warriors Chaos turn four. Uh, he decides, you know, he just takes his uh, his War Shrine and moves it to the side. He reforms his Marauder unit to face my Grail Knights. And I was looking at that. My first reaction was, I wonder if I could march my Grail Knights and get out of line of sight of that Marauder unit. Alternatively, I can turn them around and march to the left on this picture and just get the heck away from everything until I can get at least two units facing the same direction. I'm just in a really awkward position here. Uh, here the, the Hell Cannon, uh, I think, targets my Questy Knights, forces a panic test, and they pass it. And the uh, Warriors of Chaos finally beat down. On turn four, they finally kill the Grail Relique. And they turn to face my guys. Uh, so, Bretonian turn four. So, I charged my general to the War Shrine. I think I needed a ten. My initial thought was to march him up, just to make sure that on my next turn, they could be get into uh, combat where I need them. But I thought I'd take the chance, and it failed. I rolled a one, a one, and a two. So, they, they, they stumble forward two inches, and that's it. Uh, I took the Peg Knights in there. In hindsight, that's a mistake. Even Peg Knights are not going to to uh, kill a War Shrine. And, um, yeah, so I think that was a, a nice lesson learned. I charge six Questy Knights into the Hell Cannon, and uh, I don't know what I don't know what should happen there, but, I, I mean, I think that's what Questy Knights are designed to do, being high strength. So that's what that looks like. There's that. You can see that I... Um, reformed the Battle Standard Bearers unit. Probably going to get charged, but that unit, in, in addition to being offensive, is actually very defensively built. I've got two characters up front, both with, re with uh, re-rollable armor saves. My Prophetess has a Crown of Command, and if they can hold something up, my Grail Knights can come in in the flank. So overall, it looks like that. After combat, the those Chaos Dwarves kill two of my Questing Knights. The Hell Cannon kills one, I kill a couple dwarfs, and I have realized that that's a mistake. I don't know what should happen, um, but I need to know if I have six Questy Knights, if I should take that into a Hell Cannon, because based on this experience, the answer would be no. And same thing here. Pegasus Knights have no business going into combat with a War Shrine. 
Uh, let's see, my trebuchet kills some more of these marauders, which makes them a little bit easier to deal with in the future. Go to Warriors of Chaos, turn five. His uh, war his warriors charge my uh, general's unit. I'm sorry, my battle standard bearer's unit. Um, I, this is what they're designed for, like I said. I don't know how long I can last, because General has a sword of anti-heroes, and I've got three characters in there. And he, he didn't. He wasn't thinking about it. He just said he had seven attacks. In hindsight, we realized he should have had eight attacks, uh, because he didn't realize the Prophetess was in the second rank. So um, I'm not going to last too awful long with that unit there. I need to, to break his warriors uh, some other way. Uh, during the magic phase... Uh, his wizard miscast blows up a bunch of his marauders, and that actually, I think, in hindsight, really hurt me because that made me think that my my uh, quest my uh, Grail knights could probably take on that unit. They wouldn't be steadfast, could break them, and then turn around and help later on with the BSBs fight. Over here, the hell cannon makes short work of my uh, questy knights. Uh, the battle rages on here. You can see he actually didn't do too many wounds to me. Uh, armor saves and ward saves were really saving the day. We go to Bretonian turn 5. And my dilemma here was, do I take the Questy Knights into the flank of his warrior unit, or do I take in the Marauders? And, um, yeah, I mean, in hindsight, they should have gone into the flank of the warrior's unit, because I don't think he has anybody with Stubborn, and I just very likely would have beaten him in combat and could have overrun, and that would have given me a charge into the Marauders anyway. Matter of fact, the the uh, Grail Knights would have been in their front, and the my Knights of the Realm unit would have been in their flank. And but the reason I didn't do it, my fear was, what if they don't break and then the Marauders come into my flank? So it was a dis tough decision to make. That's what I did. I think it was the wrong decision. After combat, it looks like that. You see, my Pegasus Knights got beat and run down, I believe. So we go to his turn. His War Shrine comes into the flank of my Battle Standard Bears unit. And, yeah, that didn't go well at all. In his turn, he just killed everything. I mean, he killed three of my, my Grail Knights when I charged in there, then killed the remaining three. Um, this time, his general just absolutely... I think the general himself killed six or seven of my knights. I mean, just killed them. <laughs> so the game went south in a hurry, and it ended just like that. So it uh, ended up being a total massacre against the Bretonians. Uh, the game certainly wasn't going that way until the very end. Uh, I'm okay with that. It was a real, real fun game. And, um, you know, it was, you know, I'm always trying to learn with it. I think this was a good learning. Uh, I think the quest, if the Grail Knights had come into the flank of the Warriors, again, should have broken them, beaten them, and then the whole game would have been different. So, live and learn. I mean, whatever. Real fun game. Uh, it was nice bringing the Bretonians out again. I just, I'm used to playing them. I like playing them. Even when I screw up things like I did at the end of this game, uh, it was still gratifying to play. So um, that was it. Hope you enjoyed it.